I want to talk about two different kinds of statistical studies, experiments and observational studies. In an experiment, we apply a treatment and then try to observe or measure its effects. So let's just imagine that we wanted to observe the effect of Advil as a headache reliever. So let's say we go out and we get a sample of 25 people who are experiencing a headache. So we have a sample size of 25 and all of those people have a headache. What we could do is we could take our anvil and give the recommended dosage. and then wait two hours and see if their headaches are, elite, are, are relieved. We could actually design the study to where we checked in every 15 minutes or, or by every half hour or wherever we wanted. But because we've handed them Advil, this is an experiment. Now, as I've stated here, this test isn't so good, right? This experiment's not designed very well. I just had 25 people who had a headache and I gave them Advil and then we're gonna see if it goes away but I don't get all of the information I could by doing it that way. So what I want to imagine now is a better way of designing that experiment. I still want to test Advil as a headache reliever, but this time I want to get a larger sample, which always makes a statistical study better. And I'm going to divide that sample into two groups. 25 of them will get Advil. And then 25 of them are going to get something that looks like an Advil, but has no active ingredient. And that's what we call a placebo. It's gonna look like the actual treatment and it's gonna have all the characteristics so they don't know they're not getting the treatment. Um, but placebo is a fake treatment. It's a harmless and ineffective um, pill or medicine. So nice fancy term there. So 25 get the actual treatment, 25 get a fake treatment known as a placebo. We check in each group, and what this is going to do is give me data about what Advil does and what would happen if people didn't get Advil, and then I can compare them. This group that gets Advil, excuse me, yes, this group that gets Advil is called the test group. This group that gets the placebo is called the control group. In a statistical study, it is often a very good idea to have both a test group and a control group so that we can compare those results. All right, so that's an experiment. We apply a treatment to at least some of the participants, and then sometimes we might have a control group where we're using them to measure the effects. We know what happens in the general population. So let's talk about the observational studies. Well, the key difference is in an observational study, we don't apply a treatment. We only observe and measure. And so if I wanted to study the effects of Advil through an observational study, I'd have to take a sample of people and then observe whether they used Advil to treat headaches or not, and then have them report to me the effects of Advil. And in this idea, we can see several weaknesses in the observational study. Number one, I don't know how many of these people have ever taken Advil to treat a headache. Number two, I'm going to rely on them using their memory to report its effects. And I don't have any control of what's going on during that time period. In the experiment, I can control its length, how often I get information from the, from the test group and the control group, and I can also control other factors such as how much water they drink during the test period and literally anything else. The observational study, I lose all of that control. So sometimes it's easier or you get better data from an experiment where it might be easier to do an observational study. So that's the main difference between an experiment and an observational study. In an experiment, you apply a treatment and have a lot of control over what's going on. 
in an observational study, you just observe and measure, and you might not have as much control of other variables that might pop into your study. Those are called lurking variables. Variables that we're not planning for that come up and influence our study are called lurking variables. In an experiment, we can try to control those. Headaches are often caused by dehydration, so we can make sure in the experiment that our subjects drink plenty of water and drink the same amount of water in the experimental group, the test group, and in the control group. Whereas in the observational study, I have no control over that at all. And so how much water people drink might become a lurking variable.